if you're like me, you'll be looking at the Black Friday sales at the moment. Black Friday is upon us, loads of deals to be had everywhere. I've uh, been looking at trainers because I do a lot of running. Uh, but it dawned on me that we'd, we're adding Black Friday deals where I work at First Light Optics. So I thought I'd share some of those with you. So I also want to share some events that are coming up in the night sky over the next couple of weeks towards the end of November. Just so it's not just all about the equipment, it's about what's going out there in the night sky as well. So let's get to it and I'll, we'll see what I've got for you. So first of all, uh, ZWO, I've got a really great deal on the S30 at the moment. Like... A few years ago, I'd never thought I'd see a, a fully functional, good smart telescope for £369. These things used to cost thousands. So this is absolutely remarkable. 369 for the S30 smart telescope is a cracking deal, saving a £50. It was great at 419 Just to put this into perspective, the, the Sony IMX662 sensor that's in this thing, if you bought that as a planetary camera, I've got the 462, it's, it's 200 pounds just for the, the sensor, uh, an autofocuser, which this has got in. Uh, if you were to buy a separate ZWO autofocuser, that's like 160. So that's the money just in the sensor and the autofocuser before you get to the apochromatic optics, the SIR that's built into it, the, the motorized mount, the interchangeable filters and the dew control. So for 369, don't miss it if you've not got one. It's a fabulous smart telescope. I've really enjoyed using mine. The only thing they don't do well on is planets, but I'll talk to you about a smart telescope that's actually not bad on the planets in a moment. But for galaxies and nebulae, this is a fantastic deal if you've not got one of those. Now, Dwarf Lab, they've got a deal as well. Dwarf free, they've got £33 off their Dwarf free. If you want a smart telescope that's super compact but incredibly powerful, this is the one to go for because, like, if you put it in EQ mode, it will absolutely beast long 60 second, 90 second exposures without dropping too many. I did a side by side with this compared to my S30. Well, I borrowed the S30, so it's not technically mine. Uh, it definitely did better in EQ mode than my S30. The S30 is the better uh, better of the two, I'd say, if you just want to plonk something down in AZ mode and grab a nice looking picture on the screen. We're pressing as few buttons as possible and I'm sometimes feeling quite lazy, so I do often reach for the S30 and I think that's a better option for beginners. But if you want to take your imaging further, I think the Dwarf 3 is a better option. It has got lots of great features. like um, It's got like the Mega Stack feature built in with the software as well. You can do a lot of um, post-processing within the app and it's got high resolution and it does fare, in my opinion, it fares better in EQ mode. So a great deal, 466 for that is wild. These are all, both the S30 and the Dwarf 3 are good for daytime use as well with their dual lens system, good for wildlife landscapes. But the deals don't stop there. William Optics are at it as well. They've got deals on pretty much everything ranging from 5% to in the case of the Wyrm Optics Guide Star 61, they've got a massive £130 off, which I think works out to something crazy like 34, 35% off. Now that's a remarkable deal considering this is effectively an F FPL 53 doublet uh, refractor that if you add the the Wyrm Optics um, adjustable flattener to it, you've got an astrograph for 400 and something pounds. That's with really good quality glass and very light too. Um, 1.44 kilograms for this uh, guide star. Uh, just bear in mind it's a helical focuser at the back, uh, but a very lightweight, beautiful optics for an incredible price there. So that's worth highlighting in my opinion, but there's deals on everything to do with William Optics. Um, they've got a deal on their binder viewers as well, but I can't see that listed on this page. It's probably on the next page. Lots of deals on their telescopes and accessories, even better off masks. There's a bino viewer. Good saving on that. Next up, I wanted to bring shine a bit of light on this Bressa uh, classic long focal length refractor because we've got £90 off. It's only £149, which is a remarkable deal. And I briefly owned this many, many years ago, probably 10 years ago, when it first kind of launched with Bressa. I grabbed it. It was probably around that price then, to be fair. Um, because of inflation, it's gone up to 239 And I thought that's remarkable. A remarkable price for such a telescope but when it arrived it did have quite a plasticky 
clamshell and the you know the focuser and the finder and everything was a bit plasticky metal tube and obviously glass optics and you get a solar filter with it as well but i did you know i was a bit fussy at the time and i didn't appreciate what i was getting for my money and i sent it back and i kind of regret that really because in hindsight i just didn't appreciate the quality of the optics you're getting for in this case 149 pounds it's a achromatic doublet crown and flint and an f13.3 it's going to be really nicely corrected a very flat field virtually no chromatic aberration super contrasty with no central obstruction 149 pound for a solar ready and a planetary lunar ready telescope like that is remarkable just add a add a good stable mount because i had mine on an eq3 and it with that length of tube it was a bit wobbly the eq5 would have been better now unistellar now these are the original people that brought out smart telescopes, I think. Um, I think that's the case. Uh, now, the competition is really fierce with smart telescopes, so most people will go for the more affordable S30s and the Dwarf 3s and the S50s because they offer a remarkable value for money. But these do have some features that those simply do not have. Uh, for starters, they've got more aperture and resolving power. You can actually see... If I click on that one, I think, and scroll down, it's the only... No, it wasn't that one, was it? Is it that one? No, maybe it's the other one. Let's have a look. Let's try that one. There's a picture of Jupiter that I want to show you. Where is it? I did prep for this video as well. Uh, is it that one? Has it disappeared too? Aha! Like, this is the only smart telescope. Smart telescopes are great for galaxies and nebulae. Uh, they're not very good for planets. They're just the optics just don't have enough reach but this one's got a bit of a larger optic 85 millimeters i think in a lot of the cases and finer resolution around about 1.4 arc second and that's allowing you know some resolving power on the planets like the other smart telescopes can't do enough to be able to you know see the great red spot even so and i believe this one will live stack planets which i don't think the others can do in the same way i think you have to export the images to do that but this will do it within the telescope but that's not the only thing the pro models have this nikon eyepiece here so you get more of a visceral looking for a telescope experience but you get to see the color and detail that a smart telescope can show you uh, normally on your tablet screen or your phone screen you get more of a visceral looking for a telescope experience with this oled Nikon screen here uh, so that's very good but the thing that gets me about these most excited is the fact that there's a citizen science program associated with Unistellar where you can submit your data and share data for actual professional research into things like asteroid detection you know near earth objects exoplan exoplanet transit detection all sorts of exciting things like that and there's someone who who studied astronomy at year 2000 to 2004 at university with the, the the aspiration to become an astronomer despite my appalling maths ability with that in mind something like this really appeals to me and i wouldn't mind trying this at some point with the unistellar so don't you know don't discount it also i believe it's the only smart telescope which will get rid of satellite trails whilst it's stacking as well so yeah the, there's fierce competition but don't discount the unistellar now there's amazing deals with barter at the moment they've got a sale on with 20 percent off and you know that's really good for things like if you want something that's going to compete almost as good as a teleview um eyepiece these come darn close from what i know and you know the morpheus for example 76 degree field of view really immersive and 20 millimeters of eye relief which means you can wear your glasses and still see the full field of view very immersive even if you need to wear glasses super sharp super contrasty glow in the dark text and yeah dual barrel size all sorts of crazy stuff there barder zoom good deal on that and the normal standard barders which work well down to f6 but some good deals there on that um aspheric model as well on their orthos some good money off and their barder q um barlow as well now there's not big deals on zw at the moment but certainly if you go and look at the bundles if you look at like the bundle with the the filters where is it there we go this is the camera i've just picked up the 533 pro 
Um, I've not shown it on the channel yet, but I bought it a little while ago. I've been playing with it, been really impressed with it. There's a deal on at the moment if you buy the, the bundle with the IR cut filter and the dual band uh, nebula filter, there's a bit of money off there. And the same with the 2600 and the 294 as well. Deals there with the new model of the 2600, the P25, the latest model, and this 2600mm Pro as well. Bit of money off there. Now it's less strong, I'm keeping on the theme of smart telescopes. This is the ultimate smart telescope, literally, they call it the ultimate bundle. Um, very fast Rasa optics, f2.2, sucking in that light for a lot of results on short exposures, but then you can go really deep into long exposures as well with the wedge putting you in equatorial mode which allows you to use this star sense guider so you're able to take really long exposures take it out to a dark site because it comes with um, a, a case as well and you get the nebula filter and that's the saving of 476 pound and this is the mark ii with the improved uh six seven eight sensor i think it is yeah which is a, a big you know it's a low read noise and high resolution than the original 178 sensor. And finally, I just want to point out that we've got an absolute shed load of stuff on the offers page at the moment. Pages and pages of good deals, um, partly because we brought, we had a massive show at the IS this year, and a lot of this stuff is open box stuff that's just been shown once for one day, just sat there on display with people looking at it just for one day and therefore you get a saving on it so some good deals to be had there other things are customer returns and warranty repairs and things like that but there's a lot of um you know uh x display stuff that's only been displayed for one day at a show so that's all the deals for the moment we'll be adding some more and i'll bring those to you in maybe a part two um, but also i want to talk about some events that are occurring at the moment because we've got the Leonid's meter shower that's peaking in the next couple of days so if you're lucky enough to have clear skies look towards Leo you'll see about 10-15 events uh, an hour maybe worth setting up your your camera take some a wide field chart maybe uh, also Uranus is at opposition on the 21st of November so it's going to be uh, big and bright in the sky relatively speaking you know, visible through binoculars, small telescopes, and a good opportunity to image it if you've got a lot more focal length than a planetary imaging camera. Um, that's positioned just about four degrees below Pleiades, if you want to search out that object. And for all those deep sky astrophotographers out there who dislike the moon, um, it's new moon on the 20th, so that'll be your darkest skies, your best opportunity to grab your deep sky target long exposures. And Saturn's fairly close to opposition, on the 29th of November, no opposition, occultation, sorry, it's getting very close to the moon in the sky. That's a good um, opportunity to photograph those together as well or observe those together in a wider field eyepiece. So that's the news, that's everything that's happening in the next couple of weeks. Uh, all that's left to say is a big thank you to my channel members and Patreons, and I'll see you on the next video. Catch you later.